it will tear your soul apart again. Clive Barker's brilliant Hellraiser movie from 1987 has received its very own resurrection. I'm Stephen Archibald and welcome to my movie podcast. Hello, and thanks for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. Hell is Other People. Hellraiser 2022. David Bruckner's Hellraiser 2022 is surprisingly good. Surprising, because apart from the first four Hellraiser movies, yes, I even rate Hellraiser Bloodline, The rest of the franchise had proved to be non-essential, unfortunately, that is, until now. I can now take pleasure in reviewing the 11th Hellraiser movie. The amoral Cenobites have come out to play their sadistic games again, and they do it with considerable style here. The down and dirty sexual aspects of the original may have been all but expunged from the reboot, but it remains gory, unsettling fun. A case in point. We first encounter the evil forces of the Cenobites towards the start of the picture, in a scene set during a rather tame looking orgy, in a place somewhere that's very upmarket. We see a handsome young hustler get to play with the mystical puzzle box. A vicious claw-like blade springs from it and pierces him through the hand. Those dreaded chains arrive and he's dragged away to somewhere dark and very gruesome. Ah, welcome back classic Hellraiser. It's been a long time. Some people have taken issue with the fact that Pinhead referred to as the priest in this movie, is now played by a woman. But I can't really see what the problem is. For one thing, I've always found the Cenobites to be somewhat androgynous. What with their torn flesh and fetishistic leather clothing, harnessing the dark sexual energy of both male and female souls, and, more significantly, In Clive Barker's original 1986 novella, The Hellbound Heart, on which Hellraiser is based, the character we know as Pinhead is depicted as genderless in form, with a feminine voice. Jamie Clayton portrays the priest, and she looks so right in the role. She has a strong screen presence and delivers her well-written dialogue with considerable assurance. Jamie's portrayal doesn't erase the great Doug Bradley's interpretation of Pinhead. I believe that hers exists comfortably alongside his. In fact, Jamie's performance and appearance met with Bradley's full approval. On Twitter, he posted, I'm blown away by this, the clever redesign of the makeup, the shimmer of the pinheads, before he went on to conclude, it's simple, subtle, disturbing and sexy, everything it should be. It's such a shame that Doug Bradley did not take up the filmmaker's offer for him to make a cameo appearance in Hellraiser 2022. The movie stars Odessa a Zion. Her character Riley McKendry is a troubled young woman recovering from addiction. She resides at her brother Matt's home, along with Matt's partner Colin 
and their flatmate Nora. Riley gets caught up in a criminal scheme, cooked up by Trevor, who's a boyfriend of sorts. From a far from impenetrable safe, they wind up stealing the puzzle box. Oh dear. The Cenobites are about to introduce Riley, Trevor, Matt, Colin and Nora to a whole new world of pain. To prevent everyone from being brutally picked off one by one, Riley not only has to navigate her way around the six configurations of the puzzle box, she also has to work out who's behind it, which leads her to a hedonistic billionaire called Roland Voigt, who's portrayed by the handsome Croatian actor Goran Viznich. He's the equivalent of the Frank Cotton character from the original Hellraiser film. Goran's fine in the role, but there's nothing sexually perverse about how his part was written or played. Our Frank would have been most disappointed by this aspect. Is this film a reimagining of Clive Barker's brilliant creation? In response to this question, I feel that there are two distinct ways in which you can interpret Hellraiser 2022. You can either see it as a reboot, a reimagining of the classic movie, or, as I like to do, you can see it as a continuation of the series with the Cenobites simply regenerated, in much the same way as Doctor Who. After all, there's still Pinhead, aka the Priest, and also the likes of the Chatterer, in a role taken by the towering Jason Lyles on this occasion. Plus we get to see a few more Cenobites in this one, a couple of standouts being the Gasp, who's played by the British actress Selina Lowe and the Asphyx, who is portrayed by Zachary Hing. The breathing noises which each of them make are truly disturbing. So, in a movie full of great practical and visual effects, a big shout-out must go to the sound designers. Like most die-hard Hellraiser fans, I love the look of the original Cenobites, but it's worth pointing out that a guy called Keith Thompson did a terrific job recreating them for this movie, serving as lead concept designer. Instead of being kitted out in kinky black leather, each and every one of the Cenobites is now clothed in outfits made up from their own skin. There's something really quite beautiful about them. They're like great ambassadors for horror chic. The sculptors Jeremy Aiello and Mike Rotella, plus the special effects couple, Josh and Sierra Russell, are among the many expert craftsmen and women who worked on this movie. The director, David Bruckner, is held in high regard for working on the anthology movies, VHS and Southbound, as well as for directing The Ritual from 2017 and The Night House from 2020. Incidentally, The Night House was penned by Ben Collins and Luke Piotrowski, who also happened to be the co-writers of the screenplay for Hellraiser 2022. Following on from the story, they had developed with David S. Goya. The Night House had impressed the Spyglass Media Group so much, they presented its director and writers with the opportunity of making this movie. Ben Lovett provided the strong atmospheric music score, and it was a wonderful idea to periodically throw in cues from Christopher Young's superb scores 
for Hellraiser 1987 and Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Oh, those bells. They just bring joy to the heart. Well, at least for some of us. Likewise, a number of great lines are lifted from the original, such as, We have such sights to show you, and Watch your pleasure. Hellraiser 2022 was filmed in Belgrade, in Serbia, during the September and October of 2021. After appearing at the Fantastic Fest on the 28th of September 2022, it was released by the streaming service Hulu on the 7th of October of the same year. And it is now at last available everywhere. On the strength of this film, we have not seen the last of Pinhead. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you very much for listening to my podcast. They came from within cult movie reviews. If you feel I'm doing a decent enough job, please feel free to follow me. You can find all of my podcasts on most podcast sites. Please take good care of yourself, and bye-bye for now.